Hey, what's happening? What's happening, man? Pavement, we in the building. It's your boy Dre the Hit, man. East South put off the Texas, but we represent for the whole city. Roy Ducourt, Diamond Mine Productions, Long Live King Day. We in here. What's up, Block Man? It's your boy from Diamond Line Productions, Royal Court, OVA 780, man. Land of the Trill once again. We in Port Arthur, Texas, live and direct. What's happening with you, man? Man, you got a little homies with you. Go ahead and introduce you. You know all the fellas, introduce yourself. Go ahead. What's up, man? This is Big Ace. Straight out of the Villa Main, Cold 9, baby. Yeah. <clears throat> Pro Go, man. NBA, living with Trey Lords. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of Port Arthur, Texas, man. West Side, 140B, Sad. G Wiz, put on the Texas Trail Life forever, man. Royal Court, sway that. We body your verbal listen. D Alabama ETA. That's what it is. That's what's up. Let's do it. My bad. Good, good. My bad. Let's get right to it. Who is Dre the Hitman? Let's talk about it. Man, Dre the Hitman is just a young brother from a small town with big aspirations, man. Um, you know, pulled up the Texas, born and raised. Man, young cat who grew up into music and rapping. And uh, the oddball, you feel me? Pretty much my, my whole little sway on that. Okay, so with that, we're we gonna talk about the sway. You know, we're gonna talk about that. Right on, so, right on. Port Arthur, Houston, you know, a lot of people think it's synonymous, but you know, there is a Port Arthur and there is a Houston. So just talk about Port Arthur in itself and growing up here. I mean, Port Arthur, man, is different, man. It's a small town, like I said, bro. Uh, Everybody know everybody, man. You know, uh, you hear about one one situation with a person, man. The whole city feels it. You feel me? When it's tragedy, the whole the whole city in pain. So Port Arthur is his own little country in my in my eyes. Every hood got their own slang. You know what I'm saying? Like how we keep it swayzy. You know what I'm saying? My brothers on the west side might say, "Huh, man," but it's all that Port Arthur twang. You feel me? And of course, we got the trill. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll get into that too as well, man. Port Arthur. A town like how many people? Hey, what, what's the population out there? Right, let's say it was 58,000. It was 58,000. It's probably 116,000, but at night it's probably 38. <laughs> you hear that? You feel me? So ain't too much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, stay off the streets and put up that night. You feel me? <laughs> so of course, the people, we talked about a little bit off at, uh, you know, off cam, how Houston and Port Arthur became synonymous, just a little history on that. If folks don't know, just talk about that. I mean, from my understanding, being a kid to the music industry, man, or just rapping or whatever, you got, of course, the late great Pimp C and you got Bun B, you feel me? They did a lot of a lot of moving and grooving out there in Port Arthur, uh, Houston. And they did their thing in Houston. Houston respected what they was doing. We respected what Houston was doing, so it kind of became like a family thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so a lot of people think that Port Arthur and Houston is like right by each other, but it's really just the love and the bond that we grow with each other through music, you feel me? I learned that on the ride here. They are not next door to each other. Yes, we are Shout not used to that. You feel me? <laughs> Respect them. Shout out to PA. So with that, what came first? Making music or battle rap? Oh man, making music easily, man. Oh, I said the first time I ever jumped on a track, and this might sound crazy to a lot of folks, I was like five, six years old. My big brother made me rap with him. You feel me? So first time I ended up getting the big studio, I was like eight years old. You know what I'm saying? I went from talent shows, to rocking open mics and, and colleges, you feel me? Uh, my, my brother Ace can vouch for me. We was out there at the colleges as kids, rapping and doing our thing. And of course, we met Big, big Bro and Mario, like in the neighborhood, we was young. So we just do, you know, doing music with him or whatever, man. It's just, it's been music. Music been my whole thing my whole life. The battle rap didn't, didn't really start to me until 2011. Mm, okay. Then, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna get to that. So, what were some of your inspirations that you were listening to? You know, that inspired your music. You're, Cause you also produce, you also yeah. master music. So, what were some of your inspirations, production and rap wise? Right on. Well, outside of my family, you know what I'm saying, right here, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Dre is crazy. That's really partially where I got the name from. 
A lot of folks really think my government is dragging It's not. I'm not going to tell you on camera my government is. <laughs> Y'all can hold that for a later day. Look, Dr. Dre, man, my favorite producer and rapper at the time as a kid was DJ Quick. A lot of folks don't know that as well. DJ Quick, of course you had the UGK, but I grew up on both Thugs and Harmony, man. Uh, Twister, Do or Die, all that type stuff, the whole Midwest movie. Then we got introduced to Jay-Z as, as kids, and of course we brought it back down from the South for the Outkast. And, no juvenile, so everything man just kind of got incorporated in the music over time. So yeah. you've been doing the music, we talked about how young you were doing the music, you did the college scene, you were really able to make, blaze a trail with that. What made you want to step into the battle rap arena? Honestly man, my first time battling, it was over beats. Uh, I was in Dallas, I was actually living out the studio in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Most folks don't know, stand up in Harry Hines. Uh, and it's little, yeah, Harry Hines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, well, yeah, yeah, right? So we had a little warehouse and we had a studio in there and I was living in there. And the guy who was running like the, the independent label at the time, he hit me up like, Dre, you go harder than a lot of people I've met in the streets. Let's go down to the Green Elephant. You know, so we ended up going to the Green Elephant. I ended up battling the homie Spaceship, Spaceship Oasis, man. And we battled over beats or whatever and the uh, crowd was rocking with me. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I can do this, bro. That's, that's, Really the whole thing, I could do it. So 2011 was really my real introduction to the eight mile style of battle rap. But 2016 is when I first battled. And that was the homie Stephen Haynes right there in Port Arthur, Texas. Shout out to Stephen Haynes. So how was it your transition from making real music, not knocking other people, but you're making real high level music, you step into battle rap and did you have to transition your style of writing and things of that level? At first, I'm not gonna lie, I mean my first time actually battling, I actually wrote for the battle like I would write for a song. Okay. So instead of like, you know, writing punchline heavy, it was like, what would I do on the beat type of thing? You feel me? But once I actually got to live from the block, that's when I realized like this is different. You know what I'm saying? So we gonna we gonna switch it up a bit, then we're gonna add a little more metaphors, some wordplay, some angles and stuff that I was still getting accustomed to, you feel me? So that's pretty much better. So who let you know about the block your first time meeting no song? How did that all come about? First time I learned, oh, okay. First time I learned about the block, it was an accidental situation. I okay. was online looking up something. Yeah. And then K the Felon vs. OG Percy popped up. Shout out K the Felon. OG and that's the very first live from the block battle I've seen. So I waited a couple of months because I was still kind of new in battle rap. And I went and checked their page out. I think I seen Skits calling on and Jay Audio, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that was like the first people I've seen. But the person who introduced me live from the block officially was Deuce Frank. Shout out King Boo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Shout out King Boo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, oh, my bad. No, go ahead. Yeah, man. Uh, Deuce Frey, he actually had an event. Um, I forgot what the name of the court was. My first Live from the Block event. My first battle rap event that I ever attended. Deuce Frey was supposed to battle, but he ended up getting, I guess, I, I would say ducked. I'm going to say ducked. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. But the homie didn't show up, and I just ended up just watching the whole scene. It was dope. I'm like, man, battle rap is live. I can do this for real. So after the whole battle rap situation, that's when I got introduced to uh, Osama the same night. And uh, Osama pulled up. I mean, you know, he out there doing the thing on the paperwork, and I'm like, it's the league on there, ain't it? Yeah, dude's like, man, hey, yo, you need to meet my homie from Port Arthur. He dope. He rap. Osama turned and looks at me and roasts me. Like, <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He called me uh, Frozen Bird. Frozen oh. Bird Raw. I say, nigga, I ain't good by that. <laughs> so my first impression of Old Summer was, I do not like this thing. You know? <laughs> but he's like, man, you serious about battle rap and I'll sign your name up and we'll get you going. It's been history ever since, man. So let's talk about it. You definitely had a lot of success. You talked about battling Stephen Haynes. You battled Hurt. You break G.I. Joe. C3. You went to Death Wish. Syntex. Ace Sinatra. That was a boot camp battle, right? So, yes, so how did the Ace Sinatra boot camp battle set off on today? Oh, um, you talk about the stories, how, how the whole thing? Yeah, because it's like, of oh, course, you're an established musician, but right, right. you had to start as a boot camp. So right, how right. was that battle? I mean, it was different, man, for the simple fact. I've been on stage a lot, like I said, from a kid doing talent shows, et cetera, et cetera. But when I got in front of them cameras, bro, and they hit that three, two, one, live from the block, make some noise, I froze up. I'm like, what the, like that light hit me? I said, nah, this is different, bro. Yeah. So, uh, definitely, and you can see it in the footage, matter of fact, soon as I started rapping, I went blank on my first couple of bars. Cause I'm like, the first thing I heard when they said, Dre the Hitman, first live, uh, first Ace Nacho coming up. Somebody in the crowd screaming, 
Kill that nigga Ace. <laughs> Like, 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 I told her we, we far from home right now, you feel me? So, it was definitely a, a big change, man, just trying to trying to understand how battle rap, you know, the politics and all that work, and the whole format of it, man, but it, it transitioned well, man. Then, you know, of course, you also had a shot well, Kata, Emperor T on the culture. Are you surprised by how much success you've been able to have in battle rap? Interesting, uh, interestingly enough, bro, not really. Okay. You feel okay. Me? Uh, it's just, it came kind of quick, and that was, that was the point that kind of threw me. Like, because I never jumped in battle rap with intentions to be a battle rap. I just jumped in battle rap just to say, hey, man, I can, I can do what y'all doing. I'm a rapper, I rap on beats. But it was um, actually Trevo who walked up on me and was like, shout out to Trevo. Yeah, shout out to the homie, man. It was actually Trevo who was like, bro, take yourself seriously. And really brand yourself in the battle rap community. I'm like, no, but I battle rap. I don't care about this. But it actually worked out, man. So shout out to Trey Bo, Carrots, and all that, man. So we talked about a little bit off camera. You did live in the DFW era for a while. Yes, sir. You know, you're a road warrior. It seems like you've had more battles in the DFW, Austin, Louisiana versus, I guess, Port Arthur and Houston. Is there a reason for that? Or, you know, could you go into that? Well, a lot of folks won't know, man. Uh, the first battle that I was scheduled to battle on was on Battle Coliseum in Houston. Shout out to Iceman. Shout out to the homie Iceman. Um, Iceman put me up against an opponent, opponent who I had no idea of who he was. He had no SoundClouds, no Facebook, no YouTube, no YouTube. And at the time, my mother was sick. So it was like, I could either go to Houston and battle and risk something happening with my moms for somebody who I know little about or nothing about. Oh, I can just sit this one out. And I set that up. I set that up. Ended up meeting those salmon and ended up, you know, going that way. Uh, what else? What else in the question? I'm no, sorry. just you know, you're a road boy. It seems like you know, oh, well, you've been everywhere else versus. Oh, is yeah. there a battle scene in Port Arthur? I'm, I'm about to say, yeah, yeah, definitely not a battle scene in Port Arthur. Okay. There's battle rappers out there, clearly. As a matter of fact, I'm not the first battle rapper from Port Arthur. There's a few people. Shout out to the homie Steve T. Stephen T was actually with his little brothers a long time ago going around with the camcorder mm -hmm. and trying to make the DVDs like smack way yeah, back in like 2006 yeah, yeah, You feel right. me? So I don't know what happened to that situation, but that's the first folks I knew who was battle rapping. And then you got cats like my brother right here, Vivadio, and my big brother King Dave, who would just go to the street corners and just battle with cats for fun, you know what I'm saying? See who the nicest on this block and who the nicest on this block. So I grew up with a lot of people in the battle rap influence. It was just not ready for me. I was ready, more ready to battle you on a track. And you know, you diss me, I diss you back type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but I don't want everybody in the room to talk about that a little bit because when it comes to the South, you don't hear people talking about battling on the street corners. People from the South aren't lyrical. How was it on the street corners during that time and how intense was it around that area? Uh, well, really, shit. I can say it was never intense in Port Arthur. It never was an intense right. battle rap scene. You just had people, in, you know, in the area that battle rap. It just so happened to battle rap. I even battle rap, you know, at one time when they had a club called the Spot, you know. But it, it, at the time, we was doing it for money. You know what I'm saying? This shit. So I was walking out of there with a hundred dollars every time I went in there. This is about yeah, bread. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't. But it wasn't the same as what Dre and everybody else was doing, you know what I'm saying? This was just, you know, you go to the club at night, you step to the mic and go, you yeah, know, on the beat, you know. But uh, so, but to say that, you know, it's, it's competitive now, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to see who better out of me and you. When they hit the scene with that, it really, like Dre said, it really, he made it up to like 2016, 2017, like that, to where people really started coming to the light. And from what I know, really, to really take it in this area was Dre. You know what I'm saying? But now I did know a few people. I even went to school with people, you know what I'm saying? They actually battle rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can re remember coming home from the Navy and being Dre in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Going back. Battling. You know what I'm saying? This is my big brother. You know like, but when it came to a battle scene to say, man, is nobody fucking with me, it was Dre. You know what I'm saying? And so then to see it go to another level, to see him go from the Villa Main uh, battle rap, I think that was the first one, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was with him and old boy he named. You know what I'm saying? It was the Villa Main. And a real it's son of battle rap. So, yeah, so. <laughs> To see, so to see, it, to see it go from there, and then I follow my nigga all the way to Austin, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I stumped down on him in Austin to see him do his thing, you know what I'm saying? And it was live, you know, so it, it elevated, you know what I'm saying? So 
it was never intense in Port Arthur, but Port Arthur had enough talent to say, hey, you know what I'm saying, I can do this shit anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so man, look, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like, like, you know, like, you know, like, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you always had somebody that was a sharp one. But that sharp man, that piece of food, the mother trying to see you get big. I mean, so, so, to be honest with you, man, I commend Dre and anybody else that took that shit and brought it outside of Port Arthur because I'm a firm believer that anything you do needs to be done outside of the hometown yeah. as well. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the only way to grow, you know, to have others elevate to it. And they're not going to elevate to it if they don't see you, yep. you know. So that's why I commend them for that, man, for taking that shit outside of here because it was no scene here. And then look, too much fear, too much familiarity creates less clarity. Yes. Too True. much familiarity yes. creates less clarity. Yes. And that's not a pattern. That's a pattern. So even with Houston right there, you know, he still feel that as poor Arthur was his thing and you know, not even just looking to run to Houston. It was fundamental, that dude that came in like a make machine, he like an Iron Man dude, a rap or something. Mm -hmm. Battle rap, and he battle rap with the Iron Man rappers, you know what I'm saying? That's a fact, man. I mean, like, mm -hmm. going there and he lay, he lay waste to a lot of stuff and he do it with a light, easy hand. You don't think it's to the bar breakdown. Let's get right to it. That's a fact. This is the first bar breakdown. Uh, it's going to go to a point that I've been meaning to ask you about. Uh, right, right. Versus Hurt the Great, uh -oh. live from the block decade. Uh -oh. These rappers have a couple of high moments. Me, I arrived with a fever on site. Some of y'all just left Earth and got to look and see Meteor to your right. You know what I'm talking about, Dre the Hit Man. <laughs> You'd have been ducked. People died you. Are you the most feared man on the block in battle rap? We hear your name reached out by so many other people talking about you, but they won't get in the ring with you. Your man just said you came in like a machine. The God Club. Explain why that is, man. Oh, um, I don't know, man. I'm trash. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trash, bro. Let a lot of people tell you. When you see them top 10, top 15, top 20 lists, Dre the Hitman either not on them or he at the bottom. So why I win, we get booked for a battle, because all of a sudden I can't do this, I can't show up, I got sick, my mama leg fell off, you know what I'm saying, my dog got shot with a BB gun and got rabies, it's all kind of excuses. So I mean, as far as being a duck man, I don't, I don't know what it is, I have been one of the most duck people in the last four years. Easy. I mean, I only got what, six battles on the block. I've been booked over like about, about 15 times. You don't see 15 battles with Dre Hitman on the block. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, and this is before COVID, so you really ain't got no excuses. You know what I'm saying? But hey, he's an albatross, man. <laughs> he's an albatross. Were you supposed to battle Jalen at some point? Yeah, I put the battle Jalen. Jalen still owe me the fight, but I don't want him no more. Really? Mm -hmm. he, as he stands, as, we're going to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Shout out to Jalen, though. That's my boy. So with that, you know, the people say your name all the time. They duck you, they dodge you, and I know that makes you feel away. Does that kind of make you go sour on battle rap at the same time? Because you've shown you're good, not just on the stage, but also musically. Does that make you say, screw this? Because there is a podcast in battle rap. Right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, I will say this. At the most, it probably just makes me say, like, damn, I just wasted my time. But as, as long as I'm still alive and I'm still doing me, there's going to be more opportunities, more places to come, man. So I don't really get mad at battle rap, man. I do get a little frustrated at times, but who don't? Man? Battle rap is different. It's different, bro. It's wrestling. Hey, so we're about to get to my next point. Let's talk about politics. You made some, and I'm telling you to your face, I told you online, you made some great music. You have some phenomenal albums. Right. Bigger politics. Battle rap or industry making music with bigger politics. I watched one of your interviews, I think it was The Remedy, and they said they kind of deal like they deal with the same type of politics. Um, shout out to shout out, shout out to Ace Sinatra and T. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, being from Port Arthur, I think it's more politics in the Port Arthur scenery than battle rap. And that says a lot, because battle rap come with a huge load of politics. Can't stand it. But being from Port Arthur, it's like everybody got their own little circles and you know, egos tripping, and it's like, you know, what well, we could have united and did years ago or whatever and, and came to the forefront, it never happened because everybody want to be in their feelings. And you see, I'm in a room with people from all aspects and all parts of Port Arthur. We're not all from the same size. I mean, the closest is me and my big brother, Vadio. 
You know what I'm saying? We got West Side brothers, we got DPs, the Main brothers, we got people from all over in different spectrums. Like, we could have been did this. So the politics alone in this city is horrible, let alone when you start, you know what I'm saying, traveling. Like, I've been to the West Coast and did music, you know what I'm saying? Met legends like Dev Jeff, shout out to Dev Jeff. And, and seen the actual politics in the industry. And people from New York, and you know what I'm saying? They always hit my phone and saw me like the dark side of it. There's a lot of darkness. So I would say that the politics are heavier for me, musically. Than battle rap. Battle rap, you just gotta deal with a whole bunch of trolls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cats who wanna just be messy, or uh, not even messy, just dragging that through the mud for promotional, you know what I'm saying, uh, reasons and whatever, bro. Like, I ain't here for all of that. That's game I'm game here to rap. You feel know I me? Mean? That's some game attacks. Yeah, facts. So, you talk about the Port Arthur music scene. So, of course, there's been plenty of successful people that came out of Port Arthur. You know, of course, UGK is the staple. And it, it's still kind of fractured in some ways, but you said it's not as united as it could be. Mm hmm. Okay. Has it, has, would you say it's been like that for years or yeah. like, as errors come? Oh, I mean, for years, man. I mean, oh, look, see, that, this is the big homie, man. T. Wiz said for yeah. years. Body will tell you for years. H will tell you for years. And the hottest young rapper in Port Arthur, in my eyes, Prevo, can tell you for years. It's been like that, man. Like, I was a kid. Literally, we was kids. Me and H, you know what I'm saying? We would be out there with my, my big brother, and we'd be in these different circles with the DJ DMDs and the UGKs and the gangster players. It's like all these original put off the rap groups. And of course you had Big Brother Vadio and all of them would tell us like, yo, y'all the, the ones, you feel me? But if we the ones as kids, why y'all not investing in the ones? Is it because you feel like the ones are a threat to you? I don't know, like I said, it's the ego tripping, man. I'm not, I'm not ready for it, we're not here for it. None of my people here for it, you know what I'm saying? That's why we unified. I mean, we ain't trying to, I'm sorry, respectfully and respectfully to my boy Ace, because he really wants the city unified. I don't really too much care for it. I rock, I rock with who I rock with out here. I can name some names. I'm not going to do no name dropping on camera. They know who it is. When I'm talking, I look at this camera. You know I rock with you about how we move and how we work. Besides that, y'all can have So there are people poisoning the sword. Of course. Man, you're about to turn the crucified, bro. <laughs> I'm mean, really, really crucified. Really, you the vibe when, you, the when you look at when you look at the big ass gumbo pot, though, man, you look at a lot of people that's uh, that's trying to achieve the same goal or somewhat have the same goal, right? So anybody that's doing the same way, the smallest amount of success to them is the biggest failure to the person that's trying to trying to exceed that goal, or trying to trying to reach that goal. You know, so I say that to say. Anybody could feel like the next man is in their way. You know what I'm saying? Let's say, you know what I'm saying, my my young dog Prevo right here, you know what I'm saying? He making some motherfucking noise. It can be somebody out there that's trying to make noise, but they can't because he making noise, right? So, so instead of instead of supporting it, he in the way. You know what I'm saying? So they not. And that's where that's where a lot of poor other issues can come in at. So look, if you believe you in the way. Man, if I'm in the way, I'm gonna get out of the way. Straight the fuck up. Fuck you, Lyle. Well, this is leading to. Fuck you, Lyle. Well, this is leading to. Fuck you, Lyle. Fuck you, Lyle. Find your own way. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you, Lyle. But you gotta still. You gotta still just put out the verse of everybody. We gonna let the city regardless. So we've been here all our life, man. You know what I'm saying? We ain't been nowhere else. We've been right there. Right here in this spot next to the wall. So with that, battle rap. You, you have music, you have music fans. So when you started battle rapping, were you able to integrate the two? Because I've heard some people say that maybe music, music fans and battle rap fans, it, it doesn't gel all the time. Where I may be a fan of Dre the Hitman, but I don't care about the guy who's standing across for the next six minutes. Is it hard to integrate the fans? Actually, for most people it is, but for me it was never like that. I don't know, it's because, I, for one, I've never been a popular guy, right? But people who rock with me, rock with me. As I said on the freestyle, I just knew a bunch of niggas that knew a bunch of niggas, and we all got the pop. So basically, the people I knew from the music side, they was just so happy to see me do something different for Port Arthur, which wasn't seen out here. So when I started battling, they was like, well, we kind of mess with battle rap. And some of them really did, and they was like, well, let's check out the homie and, and support him. So it was just like, it was a smooth transition for me, man. It wasn't nothing too crazy, you know what I'm saying? My battle rap fans, they buy music. My music fans buy music. My music fans watch battles just like my battle rap fans watch battles. Man, you sold the whole album out of the Google Drive. I do. Oh, you did your research. Oh, 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 you did your research. Oh, 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 that. I want that motherfucker too. I want that motherfucker. Feel me? So why do you think 
take so many battle rappers, and, and usually this is guys who start out as battle rappers, then go into making music while they have so much of an issue. It seems like it's an industry thing now where if you start as a battle rapper and make music, they don't even want to touch it now because it seems like 84 bars over one beat versus they can't make a hook, they can't make a bridge. Why do you think that stigma exists? Well, I think the stigma actually just is what it is, which is okay. most battle rappers can't make a song. <laughs> and, you know, that ain't no slur. It's just a fact, bro. Like, because especially the way that the music industry is what the youngsters call evolving, and I kind of think it's devolving, but that's neither here or there. You know what I'm saying? If you can't come up with a catchy hook and some, some melodies and uh, over 808s, and you want to come over there just rapping all your punchlines and blah, 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 and word, like super wordplay, a lot of folks don't want to hear it. Now, we might still want to hear that. I do. I still like tracks with four verses on but these people today, they want to hear a minute and a half, two minutes and a half and all tracks, you feel me? Yeah. I mean, so at the end of the day, uh, yeah, I'm going to be that way I say. So it just is what it is with battle rap. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, y'all just, I don't know, man. Keep up with the time, man. And you don't have to change who you are, man. You can be a battle rapper, you can be lyrical. Just make it a little more catchy, man. Or make it relatable. Because I can say, hey, everything I say ain't catchy. It's just my battle rap fans, they can relate to me because what I gave them all. Battles, they hear it in the music, and vice versa. The music people see it. I'm talking about doing this and that, he got the bang in the book. Well, they probably seen it for real, <laughs> you feel me? So that's what that is, man. Just be, be relatable, man. That's all. No, so speaking on that, we're going to get to the next bar breakdown. Uh -oh. This is off the higher album, Four David. Hmm. Stop asking if I'm spiritual or religious. What's the difference? Because all of y'all fighting over an image. Questions you be asking. You getting beside yourself. Mr. Know-it-all, go somewhere and go find yourself. Go and remind yourself the whole purpose of your mission. What, what, yeah. Man, let's talk no, about it. No, the no, God no. Flow. Yo, Break yo. down the God Flow. It's yo. on the stage. It's in the music. You definitely have a message. Have you been a preacher? Answer that as well. Just break that gotcha. down. Gotcha. Well, that track actually was produced by my big brother, G. Wiz. Shout out, G. Wiz. You know what I'm saying? We was actually laughing at that Russell Westbrook sure. video. Hey, y'all did a great job yeah, this For about a week straight. We, I didn't know if it was going to get clear with his name, but like once we got all the, you know, the legal, uh, legal issues out the way, he's like, are oh, we good? We can sound for this. So when he was making the beat, I was like, bro, I got something for this. It's going to be different. Um, that bar in particular, man, it was just me being a young brother who practices my spirituality that I get stoned for a lot. It's cool. Um, I know there's a lot of people from the Hebrew Israelites to Christians to Islamic faith brothers to Buddhisms to Third Eye Kemet, whatever you you practicing, you know what I'm saying? You practicing your ancestors or you praying to Jesus. People are fighting too much over images. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, hey, at the end of the day, you just want to say your God is black, your God is white, your God is Asian. And I'm like, bro, that's that's not even really what that is. Like, because what I do believe in is that God being a spirit. A lot of folks don't understand that, you feel me? So, I'm like, I don't want to just fight over an image. And then you want to ask me questions about me. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm like, yo, you're getting beside yourself. How about you go and find yourself? Because one of my favorite Egyptian proverbs is know thyself. So, stop trying to learn about me. Learn yourself first. And then go learn God and learn God and learn yourself. It all correlates and goes to one, you feel me? And as far as the pastor thing. You got a church out here somewhere? Yeah, man, you know I got the church down there today. <laughs> Double Rock Side Baptist Church Double on the river side, side of the Pentecostal <laughs> Apostolic. I've never been a preacher, bro. Never, never at all. But I did practice and I do study a lot of spiritual studies. I actually did um, study with a lot of folks in theology school. I just never wanted to be no pastor. No, it was uh, a seminary type of school. Mm -hmm. now, this is once I got older, you know what I'm saying? Once we started leaving the streets and stuff alone, I just really wanted to know about God and the Most High and who He was and what's the whole makeup of His being. So I ended up studying with a lot of people who were pastors, a lot of people who were in the church, but I never was ordained or proclaimed to be no pastor. Now, ministry, yes, but ministry just means to serve or to help people. Yes, yes, everybody got to be a preacher. Exactly. Yeah. So, yes, uh, definitely in ministry, but I'm not just uh, put in the corner with Christian ministry. It's like street ministry. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Ministry to the homeless, you know what I'm saying? Not, not too many people finna get up out here and uh, 
and go feed the homeless and go put clothes in their backs or give kids backpacks for school and, and, and paper and, you know what I'm saying, lunch bags and all of that. So, yeah, ministering, but as far as being a pastor, like, nah. You don't see me behind nobody that poop. Though I have stuff behind some poop, we don't tell them on the block. We don't tell them, okay, I step behind some pool pits. Okay. And I've hurt some feelings as well. Ooh, you step on some toes. Yeah, man, because if you're going to ask me to tell you something not the word, I'm going to tell you exactly what's written in that bad boy. And I will say, as far as me being a pastor and getting that whole, right, me getting that whole pastor image about, you know, being who I am on the block, it really came from me posting a lot of Bible scriptures on Facebook when I said I was going to leave the streets alone. All right, so we talked about it. You let it be known. Dre the Hitman is not out here running the church, he's not a pastor, but he stepped behind the pulpit and you let the word speak for itself, correct? Yes, indeed. You know, a couple of times, man, as a matter of fact, I stepped behind the pulpit and just, people ask me to teach and talk to young people, you feel me? There's been a lot of times where there was a lot of young folks in the neighborhood who had nowhere to go, school getting, you know, getting ready to start, they don't have no backpacks, no supplies, and so what we would do is, they would want somebody to talk to the youth, and who better to talk to the youth than somebody who's been in those same predicaments? Yes. So they would ask me to step, to step up there and give motivational speaks, uh, speeches rather, for the kids, and I would. But then when somebody asked me to, what the word says, rightly divide the word of God, and I would bring up the, the Bible, feelings got hurt. <laughs> because everybody is so focused on man-made religions. And I'm just like, this word says, all scriptures written before time, or whatsoever things were written before time, were written before our learning. So if I just need what's written for my learning, I don't need the theological school. I don't need, you know what I'm saying, your man-made Christianity and this and that. And I, I do profess to be a Christian. So we can go ahead and dip that in the bud too. I just don't profess Christianity. And I will say this as far as the whole church thing, a lot of people mock what they don't understand. Let's go, break down the God flow. The God flow actually came, this is very interesting, right? So the homie Ray Will, Shout out Ray Will. Shout out Ray Will. And there was a homie from PA off the set named Junior. Okay, the Pyro Monster. That's my little homie. They never met each other now. One day they like, right? So I'm in Dallas visiting with Ray Will. And he just keep on saying, Dre, you got God flow. God flow. And I'm like, what you mean? He's like, bro, like you just got that the untouchable flow is like it's spotless every time when you get on the track. It was all about music. I'm like, hey man, I appreciate that. I get back to Port Arthur, I get in the studio with my little homie. He said, Drake, man, I'm gonna start calling you God for I'm like, what? Like, keep in mind, they never yeah. even met each other. Oh, wow. I see, they don't know nothing about each other. Man, wow. And this is the exact same period, maybe like a, a week after me being in the DFW, I'm in PA and my little homie is like, you the God for them. Ray Will on the other line, you the God for Then I start talking to the homie, shout out to Royal Jew. Royal Jew, man, Dre, you got that God. I'm like, what is going on here? So I just kind of took that and ran with it. It wasn't even about my spirituality. And I think a lot of folks actually, you know what I'm saying, try to confuse the two and think, oh, well, Pastor Dre, God flow, oh, yeah. Nah, it was really just about people saying I was a God in chief. I mean, I've been in a lot of battles, I've been in a lot of situations on beats where people slugging and dissing at me on tracks, and uh, some of them don't even make music no more. So it was the God flow, you feel me? Or just get on the track and just kid it one take, you feel me? So, so, come on, baby, go ahead. Now you did Money on the Wood, you battled A Wax after your brother's A Wax. R.I.P. King Day, respectfully. Yes, just talk about how much your brother means to you. Man, I can tell you this, bro. Um, I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. This will be a whole interview within itself, you feel mm -hmm. me? You're talking about Sensei, you're talking about my second father. I'm talking about the best friend, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the starter of a lot of styles you hear in the Southeast Texas. We talking about close, close to a, a Nipsey Hustle type of figure. You know, when you have a funeral and Bloods and Crips all show up with burgundy on and burgundy kind of downers and stuff like that, you feel me? Just respect. Uh, my big brother was the closest thing to me. Uh, taught me everything from how to rap to how to, how, to, how to ride a bike, you feel me? From how to fight to how to do stuff in the streets I shouldn't have been doing, like selling drugs. Selling drugs and shooting pistols, like he showed me all of that. From how to gang bang, and he taught me how to get back to church. You know, so my brother prayed for my life. He prayed for me to get back right with God. There was a time where all this pastor stuff that they talking about, 
there was a time where I didn't even really believe in God. And my big brother prayed and prayed and prayed that God would step back into my life. When the most high came back into my life, well, I took, I took off, you feel me? So, we talking about the smile on everybody's face, you know what I'm saying? Everybody in this room with me right now have been touched in a great, tremendous way by the late, great King Day. And I, I really ain't got to say much about it. Again, like, all these relationships right now got King Dave in them. My big brother right here, one of the first people I ever rap with. My big brother right here, one of the first people I ever learned from and rap with. My big brother right here, <laughs> we used to cop herb from this man back in the day, if that's cool for me to say. But through King Dave, I knew this man, and from the neighborhood, I knew this man. And Dave ended up bringing him into the group. That brother back there told me, man, like besides his Kim Folk and a couple more other people, if it wasn't for me and Dave, he would have gave up doing this. You know what I'm saying? Because he's like, that's a street nigga, you know what I'm saying? But they ain't gonna do this, but King Dave really gave all of us some kind of blessings. It was like, yo, you don't essentially let me back here, man. I don't keep calling him Lil, that's the Lil Big Homie. Let me get that right on camera. You know, so the Lil Big Homie, that's the general, you feel me? Gave this man a blessing, like, bro, keep doing what you're doing. Ace, keep doing what you're doing. I ain't gotta tell you, knucklehead. You feel me? Nah, no, my brother love this man right here. Like, like, like uh, Kanye said, my big brother was big brother, you know what I'm saying? That's my big brother's big brother, you feel me? And now that's my big brother. G Wiz, it's all family. We all came together through King Day, man. And there's a lot of folks, like I said, who actually got the style from King Day, you know? And the boys out here wasn't rapping fast, Ace can do box for this. He was the only people we knew who was doing the fast twist of bone thug rapping. They wasn't harmonizing. Everybody was popping trunk, coming down, swinging on bows. <laughs> Except for this man, this man, that man, and then my, my boy, you know what I'm saying, he just came to the game and he ain't come out like that. You feel me? We was out there doing the harmonic melodies and oh, I guess we can go on for days, man. King Day is that one, you feel me? So That's my best friend. How was the process for the higher album for you putting that out there? Man, the higher for David, bro, was the first time in my life where I suffered from depression. A lot of people don't know that. Like a lot of people like in the battle rap uh, culture, you feel me? Who kind of got an idea who King, King Day was or is rather? You know, my people right here understand. You know what I'm saying? I was fighting depression that whole album, and I was really finna give up rapping on some other. You know what I'm saying? But Dave told me right before he passed for me to never give up. He actually kept drawing, drawing these little pictures for me and painting these pictures for me, saying, "Dre, if this happens to me, do this." If this this is like a week or two before he passed away. And one of the things he said was, don't give up rapping. He told almost everybody in this room, don't let my brother give up rapping. So after he passed, I went to a phase, a real dark phase in my life. You know what I'm saying? I had a few people to, to, to come there, you know what I'm saying? My real ones right here came to my side. You know what I'm saying? Even uh, Ray Will and Roger Jew and Eliza Versa came down here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Versa. Versa came down here and they came down here to console me, man. But I just went through a dark phase in my life, man. Back on drugs, sipping, drank, harder than ever. You know what I'm saying? Just on pills, just leaning, don't want to see the world. And then one day I got in the studio, late at night, and I started making a beat. Um, the video's on YouTube, it's called Whole Other. The Whole Other Track. Real late, like four in the morning, I'm making this dark instrumental, and I'm like, that's the vibe. That, that's it. And I just took flight, I said, you know what? For Dave, I'm not gonna give up. So through the whole depression process, man, I fought depression, and I made shoot, one of the greatest projects I could ever make, man. Nah, it's definitely and, a great album. And Master by G. Wiz, the whole album, G. Wiz, you know what I'm saying? Nah, it, it's a great album, I loved it. Like, I was really, you know, amazed because, like, I met you as a battle rapper first right. versus knowing you're a musician. Right. So when I listened to the album, how well put together it was, I was like, this is amazing. So this goes to your next album. Bobby's World. First off, how'd you get the name? Why did they call you that? <sighs> I, gotta, I gotta expose the secret on camera. Ace no, Body O no, Wiz no now. I told Prepo, Prepo no. So now it's for the world, right? Yeah. So my nickname as a child was Bobby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It comes from the cartoon Bobby's World. Yeah, classic. Yeah, because I was the small, white looking boy <laughs> with the biggest head. <laughs> In the family. So my sisters was calling me Bobby. My brother was calling me Bobby Head. Which is Bobby Head. Which is Bobby Head. So, so over time, over time. <laughs> so 
So over time, OG, everybody just started calling me body. Like my mama, my, my daddy. Like, <laughs> body will laugh because he know my family very well. Ace does too. Man, my whole family, my sisters. You know what I'm saying? Now, even to the point that I got nephews, like like my little nephew Master Pat, who was on the album, uh, the Bobby's World album. Yeah. Master Pat and them, all of them called me Uncle Bobby, or they just called me Bobby, you feel me? Nobody calls me by my real name. We still ain't gonna give out that real name for y'all. Uh, I'm Bobby. I, 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 I love Bobby Jack and I. I love Jack and I. How was that process following up? Of course. Ooh. I, 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 <laughs> we got problems. <laughs> Like it could have been emotionally draining during that process. <laughs> so I wasn't the, the body. Right, right. Well, it's, it's crazy. You, it, you, brought up, you, you see that laugh, right? So you brought up Jekyll and Hyde. So I, I want to touch that first. Yeah. Jekyll and Hyde is actually me and Big Bro, Body O, me, Body O, Verbal to say, on the side of me. You feel me? Shout out to Body O. You just call him Body O for short. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Body O. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, we see that. Yeah, like, like you talking about. Yeah, like, just that one. And we actually twin brothers. I don't know if y'all can tell them. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Oh, And it's like a lot of stuff that body don't go through, I go through at the same time. At the same time. <laughs> like, we, we not making this. Like, it can be something as simple as a man. We're we pain in the back. Everywhere. Yeah. All the time. In the lab. No matter where you at. If you in that situation, we yeah. live in the middle. Yeah. We the dudes in the car, we the dudes in the store, we the we the dudes on the street, we the dudes with the guns, we the dudes with the money, we the dudes with broke, we all that. So basically like the whole Jack of the High song was just, you know, when I was making I was making the beat, I was like, yo, bro, niggas really got problems on this to the beat, like nigga, what can I tell? I had already been done in the rap on these because he was trying to give me the rap and I was sick. I was like, I was begging this man to rap. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, um, and something else a lot of people don't know, we don't I don't write music. I don't write none of my songs. Oh, you don't write any of this. So what about battle rap? You don't write any of that? Well, to memorize, I yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely, you, you put the pen on the pad on battle rap. Even though my last battle with Khalifa, my third verse, I did not write that. Oh, okay. Third round, bro. Shout out to you. Oh, yeah, shout out to Khalifa, man. Boy. So that song in particular became came out of uh, me and him just actually going through a lot of the similar situations. We done been into a lot of problems. <laughs> Whether it been with the laws, it have been with people. You know what I'm saying? Um, Ain't the monsters, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Transformers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but as far as I'm tripping, I'm tripping, tripping. Like, bro, is we really I've been in the hospital with these doctors, they trying to dump us up on pills. Mm -hmm. People trying to understand why we spiritual, but we still angry. Mm -hmm. Like, we just men, we just people. And I feel like if more people would just admit to the fact that you got a problem. The world would probably be a better place, man. Or if not, it would just be a problematic place where we can all have fun inside that motherfucker. Man, but it's still it's like, you crazy. And yeah. then you find out that you're not. Yeah. I'm definitely crazy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> definitely crazy. You find you control not. crazy, you feel me? Man. But at the end of the day, that's that's the juggling of high joint in. Me and Big Bro, we both freestyle that song as well. It's just like we feel the energy, we know we want to talk about it. And it's actually the highest, the second highest stream song on the album. Nah, congratulations to you. Indeed, man. I appreciate and it. So we're gonna bring it back to Battle Rap real quick. Battle Cruise, you still down with Trill Up? That has to be clarified. Okay. So shout out to Paper Texas. Shout out to Paper Texas. Been doing Paper Texas for a minute, you know what I'm saying? Through these poor other streets, man. Uh, Trill Up actually started as put off the hip hop education and sports. That was it. So pre bass so not even bad right at all. Right. Gotcha. As a matter of fact, I'm about to get to it though. Our first interview was with this uh this man named Shaq at the God First store. He was asking us what we wanted to do for the city. We broke it down, we outlined it. Over time, Trinidad started becoming a battle rap clique. And Paper Chaser would tell you this. I was never a part of a battle rap crew ever. Okay. The closest thing to it was me and Deuce Frank and them clowning doing the, the whole Thuka Gang stuff, you feel me? Yeah. And we still was branding the Thuka Gang, you feel me? But I was never in an official battle rap clique, so there is a trill up battle rap clique. Okay. I just stick more to the business side of things, like, oh, we still doing put up the sports hip hop and education. If not, hey, I'm gonna come over here and do this, but I'm still gonna support y'all from here. I still do wear my trill up search proudly. We gonna hold the trill up always, you feel me? So. Not in any battle rap crews, not in any battle rap place. Been offered, but. I'm not going to ask you who, but I, I, I could, mm -hmm. you know, assume. Mm -hmm. So after that, I'm going to get to, we're going to wrap it up real quick. Right on. Uh, the Optimist, you know, I'm for sure.
sure Eternal Genius still got some smoke for you somewhere. Shout out to her, wherever you may be. The pop list, you know, we talked a lot. Who needs to see Dre hit, man? We heard Red call you out in his battle against Low. Jayla called you out of his skits. Who, who needs to see Dre hit, man? Well, you know, uh, one, I don't know too much, right? I know a little bit of, about, about everything. I, can, I know enough to say I don't know enough, right? So I know a little bit about demolition to houses. And I know that when most houses in Port Arthur, especially, when they about to get, you know, that demolition crew come through and get the wrecking and tearing down that house, there's nothing that the landlord can do. Ooh. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's a red mark on the door. Well, the landlord should have been taking care of that house. But then the demolition man come and smack that bad boy down. So I don't really have no opposition. I don't have no opposition. <laughs> My favorite color is red. I don't have no this. Hey, what advice from any level would you give inspiring <laughs> battle rappers, battle rappers now? Because you've been on the road, you've been to different platforms, you hear people getting screwed on the road or whatever the case may be, getting screwed by leads, you know. You say you're not a part of a battle crew per se, but even like how battle rap crews can hold you back. What advice would you give to battle rappers, the do's and don'ts? Oh, uh, man, just, I'm gonna tell you like this, bro. Just stay true to yourself, man. Don't ever second guess yourself, man. I'm, I don't even spar with a lot of cats. A lot, a lot of people spar. I just run you my round and get off the phone and help you get off the phone before you even tell me it was trash or yeah. not. And then I don't really do that with much people. I do it with people. I don't spar with people who don't even really battle. You know what I'm saying? Um, just stay true to yourself, man. Don't worry about trying to be on nobody's team. Um, if, the, if the opportunity presents itself, like, you still be yourself, man. Don't be. You know, because a, a lot of people gave the dojo pick a lot of flack. Shout out to the dojo. Shout out to the dojo. Shout out to the I ain't got no problem with what they're doing in the dojo click, man, because it's actually iron sh uh, sharpening iron over there, you feel me? But if you're going to do that, man, just continue being you, you know? Just don't start sounding like other people, and which they did, you feel me? That's why I can salute them. Um, people was, was going off on Ace and T saying they wrote bars together. They don't even rap like each other, you right. feel me? It's, it's a lot of BS that comes with the Battle Rap Cruise, and if you're going to be in one, just, you know, get ready for the backlash, bro. You feel me? Um, I know I got a lot more backlash coming after this, this interview, man. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. You know what I'm saying? We still, uh, uh, my favorite color used to be uh, red. I think I'm switching over to burgundy. But uh, red hots uh, used to be, I mean, I'm, I'm getting off track, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, red Kush, we used to smoke Red Kush back in the day. Hey, what, what about hitting the road? What about hitting the road? What about, uh, as far as hitting the road, man? Like going to other leagues that, because you may know the league owner, but of course going to different cities, you go by yourself, or how do you, you, how do you navigate that? Uh, red got to get smoked. Um, as far as going to other leagues, uh, Red going to die when I see him on Live on the Blocks. Send the whole shot to him. But as far as going to other, <laughs> shout out to 500, Red got to die. Five, uh, five, five, five. Uh, Going to other leagues, man, just like if you comfortable with your home league, treat every other league like your home league. I say this when it comes to music, man. Every time I step in a recording booth, that recording booth is my house. Mm, I, don't, I don't go to no other recording booths and be like, well, I'm nervous over here because this is a big city. No, that's just like how it is. We was in the attic at Barrio House rapping our butts out. So it's the same thing when I go to these other leagues, I'm me over here, I'm me over there, and just stay you everywhere you go and you're going to be swayed. Live from the block, season three, the pavement coming to you from the land of the trail. Dre the Hitman, get us out of here, man. Man, Sway that, long live King Dave, Roy the Court, we all in the building, never betrayed loyalty, diamond mind, OBA 780, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, we long live the king all day. Keep it sway. Shout out to that boy, Ron Murray, man. Salute. You know what it is, man. K104, all them people out there. Tell me what the album at, too. Tell me what the album All streaming platforms, and to be able to say that is a blessing within itself. You feel me? Everywhere. I'm a title man, though, so, you know what I'm saying? Get the streams up. And we doing numbers now. So, y'all done missed the jet. Sorry, sorry. Fun. You feel me? Let's get out of here. Sway that, Tell the numbers, don't lie, man. <laughs>